All right, my dear students, once we are done with preparing an income statement, now the last thing that we need to do in order to finalize our accounts, we need to prepare a balance sheet. Okay, so the new terminology that is being used by the examiners of the bodies uh, is not to write a balance sheet, instead to write a statement of financial position. Okay, statement of financial position is a newer name, newer name for a balance sheet. Now, in a statement of financial position, basically there are three items. One is asset, then we have uh, capital, then we have liability. Now, if you remember from your earlier studies, uh, we studied an accounting equation. Now, what was the format or uh, what was the equation actually? The accounting equation said that assets must equal capital plus liabilities. Okay. So this statement of financial position is basically uh, another depiction of an accounting equation. Okay, so instead of writing the equation in the equation form, we can write in this vertical form and this vertical form is known as statement of financial position. Okay, so normally we make it in two columns or maybe sometimes three columns three columns SOFP is basically an advanced statement of financial position so for the sake of this lesson for the basics actually we are going through the basics we are going to refer to as a two column statement of financial position now again these two columns are not debit and credit these are basically for presentation purpose uh, what is an accounting equation states Accounting equation states that assets is equal to capital plus liability. Okay, so first of all, we need to write the assets. Now, as you can see, there are two types of assets we studied earlier. One is non current asset, and another one is current asset. Okay, so the non current assets are basically permanent in nature, such as land, building, equipment, and these are not changed very often, and these are normally used for more than one year. So all of the non-current assets are being listed in the first column and the total for this would be recorded in the second column. Okay. After non-current asset, there comes current assets. Now, what is what was the current asset? Current asset we studied previously was actually cash or anything that would be converted into the cash in the near future. Uh, we have a bank balance and what happens if we withdraw the money from our bank, this bank account would be converted as a cash. Okay. Then we have an inventory. What is an inventory? Inventory is basically are the goods or the stock that we have in the business. Okay. If we are a maybe Walmart store. Okay. So all of the groceries or electronics or blah, blah, blah. Anything that we have is inventory for a Walmart or maybe any other supermarket or inventory. Whenever we sell the inventory again, it would be converted into a cash. Then we have trade receivables, also known as debtors. Previously, trade receivables are basically our customers whom we have actually sold the goods on credit. Okay, so whenever these customers will return the money that they owe us, so therefore it will also be converted in a cash. So if we add up all of these current assets, this is the total. Now, what happens uh, if we add up both of these types of assets, non-current and current assets, is equal to total assets. Now, this is the basically one part of the account equation that is assets. Now, after assets comes capital and liabilities. So, what we need to do, we need to make a heading, uh, uh, write the heading capital and liabilities. Now, how can we calculate capital? First of all, we are going to start with the opening capital. Now, where would this opening capital come from? The opening capital is the capital that is always given in the examination question by the examiner. Okay, the examiner never gives us the value of closing capital. Instead, it gives us the value of opening capital and we need to find the closing capital ourselves. Okay, then we need to add profit for the year. Now, how can we uh, uh, find the profit for the year? We have already studied the income statement for this. Now you need to refer back to my previous lesson that is income statement in order to find how we can calculate this profit for the year. Now if there is a profit, it will obviously increase our capital. Okay, so we, we are going to add this up. And if there is a loss instead of profit, we need to deduct this loss, less loss for the year. Why? Because the loss decreases our capital and the profit would increase it. Okay, then the next thing that is going to decrease our capital is our drawing. Uh, so what is the drawing? Whenever the owner of the business 
takes out anything from the business maybe uh, it's a cash or maybe money from the bank or maybe uh, take out some goods from the business for his or her own personal use therefore it is a drawing and the drawing will reduce her capital okay so if we add up the profit in opening capital if we deduct the drawing we are left with the value that is closing capital so there is no need to uh, write the label closing capital it is understood that this item is basically a closing capital now after assets and capital we are the only thing that we are left with is a liability now as you can see there was non-current asset first and then we uh, wrote current assets so similar is the case for liability firstly we need to write the non-current liability then we need to write the current liability now liability is anything that the business owe to someone else okay non-current liability is basically loan okay uh, if we have taken loan from bank or maybe from uh, some other person individual so whenever uh, the date is not mentioned in a loan we always assume that a loan is a non-current liability this means we need to pay it after one year okay so if the loan uh, has written a short term loan okay then the short term loan is basically a current liability and what happens uh, if the year is ending in 31st December 2020 in this case for Mr. ARD or ARD traders now what happens if the date in the loan is written 31st December 21 or earlier date maybe uh, October number or May June 21 so the liability that we need to pay in the next year or the upcoming year would becomes a current liability okay so the liability that we need to pay in the next year is a current liability and the liability that we need to pay after one year is a non-current liability okay so we need to write these liabilities then a current liability is a liability that we need to pay in the next year maybe short term loan or, or trade payables now as you can see a trade is stable is a current asset then similarly a trade payable would be a current liability trade payables are basically our creditors creditors is the uh, previous terminology used by the examiner creditors are our suppliers whom we have bought the goods on credit basis it means we have taken out the goods and we haven't paid them for them yet instead we have just promised our suppliers that we'll be paying them and later okay so therefore it's a current liability then we have a bank od overdraft overdraft is means that what uh, what uh, let's suppose i have 100000 in a bank and i, I need 120000 so i'll go to the bank manager and i'll request him that i am uh, this person and uh, i'll show him my id and all of the necessary documents and i'll ask him uh, i'll request him to give me 20,000 more than I actually have in the bank. So the extra amount that have been withdrawn by me from my bank account, this is not my amount, not my money. I need to return this money sooner or later to the bank. So the extra amount taken out from the bank is known as bank overdraft. And it is basically a current liability for the business. Now, if you add up all of these two liabilities, so this is the current liability, this is non-current liability, and this is closing capital now we need to add up all of these three items in order to find the total capital and liability okay so this is total capital and liability and this should match with the total assets section okay no so if it is being matched these both items are same uh, so this means the accounting equation is balanced so the asset side should always be equal to capital plus liability okay and asset is always equal to capital plus liability now let us quickly prepare uh, SOFP from the above data. Now my dear students, uh, if you have already studied how to prepare an income statement, you can move further and we can make a statement of financial position also known as balance sheet from the above data of this question Mr. ARD okay? or ARD traders or whatever. So assets is equal to capital plus liability. First of all, in an accounting equation, we need assets. We can write the heading of assets or we can also skip this heading. Uh, so then uh, after assets, we have two types of assets, non-current and current. We need to write non-current asset. Now in this question, we have already made an income statement that takes that you can see these uh, items, these transactions. We have already used these items and only the items that have not been taken yet will be taken out to a statement of financial position okay now as you can see non-current assets in this question is a property 
property or maybe building it's a non current asset in this question we only have one property there can be more than one maybe motor vehicles or uh, furniture or equipment computers these are all non current asset then we have current assets in current assets we always write inventory and an inventory it's a basically closing inventory why the sop that we need to make is at year end okay so the closing inventory we need to write closing inventory and not the opening inventory why because we are making an sop at end of the year now as you can see in the question a uh, closing inventory is never given uh, in a trial balance instead it is always given as an additional formation such as in the notes now as you can see closing inventory is there 25000 and it is an asset for the business so therefore i am writing it 25 now there are trade receivable trade receivable are basically our customers whom we have sold the goods on credit now in this exercise there is only one trade receivable and his name is jimmy now instead of writing jimmy in statement of financial position i need to write the collective name for all of the credit customers that is trade receivables okay so this jimmy guy they, he owes us 20000 because we have sold the goods to him on credit okay then we have bank and then we have cash now as you can see the bank balance uh, we do have in this question is uh, it's 216125 so if the bank is coming on the debit side therefore it is a positive bank balance instead if in the trial balance the bank is coming on the credit side or there is a, only one column and the examiner mentioned this bank as a CR that is credit balance therefore it is a bank overdraft but it's not uh, that's not the case in this question therefore the bank is coming on the debit side this means we have this much amount in our bank account then we have a cash so cash is also a current asset okay so if we add up all of these current assets my dear student these are the total of current assets and if we add up both of non-current and current assets the total that we do get is a total assets okay now one part of the accounting equation is already done that is assets now, now after assets in accounting equation we have two more uh, items one is capital and one is liability so we need to make a heading that is capital and liabilities now how can we calculate the capital so the capital is calculated uh, starting with opening capital now the opening capital is a capital that is already given in a trial balance must remember uh, that the closing capital is never being given by the examiner himself okay as uh, uh, closing capital always need to be calculated okay this is the opening capital that is 200,000 now we need to add up the profit for the year why because the pro profit increases our capital now as you can see the profit we have already uh, managed to prepare an income statement okay in the earlier lesson and the profit that we have already calculated was 41875 okay the, so the profit would be added up here why because the profit always increases our capital now what happened if there was a loss for the year and it was a negative value and if it was a loss for the year it should be directed here why because the loss reduces our capital now that uh, another thing that reduces the capital would be a drawing okay now as you can see in this question uh, either the drawings are for cash or maybe goods drawing the total drawing would always come here the total drawings are 2500 so we need to deduct this drawing figure why because the drawing would reduce the capital now as you can see in a statement of financial position there is only one item that is being deducted that is drawing and another item that can be deducted is loss for the year okay if instead of profit we had incurred some loss so therefore this loss would also decrease our capital all other items are being added we are done with the assets we are done with the capital the only thing that we are left with is a liability okay there can be two types of liability one is non-current and one is current now non-current liability in this question as you can see we have taken loan from james okay so if the examiner does not mention does not mentions that this loan uh, is a non-current or current we will always assume that loan is a non-current liability unless otherwise mentioned okay unless the examiner says that this loan needs to be paid in the next year that is 31st December 21 then if if that's the case then the non-current uh, and then the loan would be treated as a current liability and it would be written under the heading of current liability okay now as you can see in current asset we have trade receivable and in current liability we should have a trade payables now in this question there are two payables one is peter because we have bought something uh, the shop property from peter we haven't paid him therefore it is also a payable 
and any other item that has not been ticked yet and it was D'Souza. D'Souza is basically a supplier in this question and uh, whom we have bought the goods on credit. Okay, we have two liabilities. One is Peter and one is D'Souza. Now, instead of writing the names of both of these, we need to add up both of these and the collective name for all of the suppliers uh, whom we have bought the goods on credit would be trade payables. Okay, or it can be other payable uh, if we have not bought the goods. Okay. So what happens now, we need to add up all of these items, capital and non-current liability and current liability. If we add up all of these, this is total capital and liability. So my dear students, if you want to balance the balance sheet, uh, it is, uh, it should, uh, the total asset should always equal to total capital and liabilities. Now this is basically the concept of accounting equation that an asset should be equal to capital plus liability okay assets are resources of the business and these resources come from two sources either mr ard the owner of the business has invested his money okay or uh, maybe he has taken out these things on loan or a liability so the asset uh, always equal asset side always equal capital plus liability so this is basically a balance sheet or a statement of financial position.